Good morning, everyone. It is 3.59 in the morning. I'm in Malibu, California with the lovely Kim. And Kim and I are going to the airport. We're going to have a nice little conversation about life, love, the pursuit of happiness, all the good things. And she's off to Nantucket, which is in Boston, right? Yeah, it's off the coast of Massachusetts. Off the coast of Massachusetts, which is hard to say. (laughs) And she's going to rescue something. What are you going to rescue? Well, we rescue marine mammals, so seals and whales and dolphins. Wow. Yeah. And how often do you do that? Um, Every time I get out there, which is quite frequently, more often during the winter than during the summer. So, why are they needing rescue? They... What's uh, happening out there? Sometimes strand, and it's not unusual for seals to go up on the beach, because they frequently do that to rest or to digest or to get warm. Um, But for something like a dolphin or a whale, it's highly unusual for them to strand themselves up on a beach. And sometimes it's, we don't really know if it's a lapse in judgment. Most times they're ill or injured, and um, a lot of times they're entangled in fishing line and plastic. And um, we get a lot of seals that are entangled. So we'll tackle them and... um, cut it off and let them go. Well, I think it's wonderful when people take the time out of their busy schedules, and, and it costs you money to travel there, and, and, and your time, is which, which is money, actually, and to do good for others. I mean, it's not others particularly, but it's for, for the world, right? For the, the planet. species of the planet, yeah. exactly, and for the planet. The, we share the planet with those species. Exactly. Now, these people are doing this on a daily basis? Yes, there's a whole team of us. Um, It's really probably six of us who are super active and then 15 of us total. I guess we have a total of about 40 volunteers. Um, But a lot of people are full-time employees and don't have the time to be out there a lot. I happen to be retired, so I go out there frequently and that's how I like to spend my time these days. Well... Um, I always I call it karma. When you do good, whether it be for a, 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 a mammal or for a person, it comes back at you and it makes you feel good. It does make you feel good, that's for sure. What's the name of your organization? It's the Marine Mammal Alliance Nantucket. Okay, and you've been around for how long? I guess officially since, I think it was 1983. Um, not under this name. But um, there were 13 pilot whales that had stranded on the coast of Nantucket, and nobody knew what to do with them. So a group of citizens on the island got together and decided um, this can't happen again. We have to be more organized and have a plan. And so that was sort of the start of it, and it was very grassroots. Again, just citizens on Nantucket that cared, and um, it sort of evolved to this. So I suppose... had this name now, I want to say for 13 years, but don't quote me on that one. Well, now, one of the four agreements, if you've ever read that book, is never make assumptions. But I'm going to make an assumption, and it's a positive one, that you're from the East. I'm not, but I spend my time, I split my time between the East Coast and California, because my husband works there. He's been working there now for eight years. What's he do over there? He's the chairman of the urology department at Yale. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. I love doctors. I've interviewed <laughs> a lot of doctors and surgeons and nurses. Yeah. And uh, they're wonderful people. Yeah. And I love, um, you know, interviewing anyone that's doing something that's helping society, whether it be art- artists or, or teachers. I actually have four teachers I know of now that before any every class, yeah. they're having all their students say, I am fantastic. I love it. To start the class off. I which love is, it. Which is, and you know, it builds build your self-esteem, you know. Yeah. My, my agent said that every child in America needs to hear my message. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and start young. Start young, yeah. you know. A, a, a billionaire friend of mine said, he's a very powerful guy, um, and he said it's going to take about two generations for my if it's, um, for my system to work. It, it's going to take a while to get people really? out of just the habit of just saying good and yeah, well, just existing, you know. Well, I mean... Like we were saying earlier, it's a start. Things for others and for other species, you know? Yeah. And you're doing a wonderful thing. I applaud you for that. Well, it's, um, I think a lot of times we don't 
think about the creatures that we share the planet with and um, or you, you hear these stories about whales becoming entangled or seals and think, oh, it's somebody else will do it. Yeah. But, you know, if you have an opportunity and the time, which I'm blessed to have the time right now, um, you know, it's just, it's a, it's, it, it really does make you feel good. I mean, there's nothing like taking all this stuff off of an animal that will probably eventually kill it because it can't feed, it can't swim. Right. Um, and then... And it's caused by it. us. Yes. That's the, that's the yes. part of it. We, 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 we're the... Yes, because I do get culprit. some pushback from people who say, well, you know, for example, we um, frequently encounter seals that have had shark interaction. And, you know, that's part of the circle of life and there's nothing we can really do. Occasionally we'll encounter a really badly injured seal and will euthanize it um and we do all of this under a permit from the um, national oceanic and atmospheric administration so we're not just out there doing this on our own right um you're regulated we are and um we'll euthanize it just to put it out of its misery um and we do get some pushback for doing stuff like that because it is part of the circle of life and and i can see that side of the argument but doing the disentanglement, as you pointed out, that is very much something that we humans have caused. And I, it's extremely rewarding to um, disentangle an animal. And it's funny you said that you get the pushback from certain people. You can't make everyone happy. No, you No matter can't. what you no, do. No, you can't. Now, I, I interviewed this um, one guy. He, was, he says he was a public figure. Mm-hmm. He never told me his name. But he heard my, my speech, and he loved it. And I said, do you mind if I get a testimonial from you? And outside the car, he said, in, eight, in 18 seconds, it was quite um, beautiful. It was in his own words, without rehearsal, just his thoughts. And he said, I'm happily, I'm happily, I'm very happy that I've met Dr. Fantastic. And I believe his Be Fantastic movement is going to change, the, it's going to move the needle to change people. And it'll move the needle to change the world itself. And that was quite beautiful, right? Yeah. So I shared it on Facebook. And... I've never seen a thumbs down on any of my uh, my YouTubes. Wow! And it was a, and someone did a thumbs down on it, <laughs> and I took it to heart. And I was thinking, how could someone say that was a bad thing, right? Right. right. And I, I really was upset. Then I realized, and I talked to some people, and there's these people called trollers, and all they do is they troll the internet to find stories and just put everything down. Oh, They're just wow. negative people. Oh, they don't, wow. And it could be the most beautiful rose with a baby holding it and they're going to say oh you're endangering the baby because of the thorns or they'll just say negative shit about things wow, and it's a, it's a shame that's sad. and that's our society um and it's somehow it's, it's just the i think it's the overcrowdedness that's that's making those things happen well two things first of all i feel sorry for trollers i i think what a horrible way to live your life yeah. putting, putting beautiful things down yeah and number two do you remember in school, for me a long time ago, um, hearing about a, a study, I forget if it was a psychology or a sociology experiment, where they, they um, put a bunch of mice, I think, in a, in a confined space and watched them. And as the numbers rose, if, if there were just a few of the animals in the space, they got along. But the more crowded it became, the more they started fighting with each other. And I think of that all the time when I hear about what's happening in our world. Um, it just, are we becoming too crowded? And it's, the planet has plenty of space, at least now, um, but we're all in concentrated areas. Not everyone, but, you know, there are the big cities and... Um, anyways, I think about that experiment all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, you just drive the 405 freeway, and you know that there's no one of the thousands of people that are surrounding you in bumper-to-bumper traffic that care about you whatsoever. Yeah. You're an impediment in their way to yeah. get down the road to get to to make money. It's a money-driven society. Yeah. We have to make money, of course. Yeah. But unfortunately, people will push you aside 
you know, and I talk to a lot of people now because I'm, uh, I'm a motivational speaker. Yeah. And my friends would call me and say, I was in the subway, and a guy just run past me and pushed me aside yeah. and knocked me down the stairs. Yeah. It's like nobody cares about anyone. Yeah. There's no civility. No, you're right. It's it's. Now it's I want to see people. Disturbing. I want to see people join this movement. Let people in in traffic. Imagine if that's the last or the least thing that happens from this movement is everyone starts letting people in in traffic. It takes literally two seconds of your of your time to do that. Yes. It makes them feel good. Yeah. Makes you feel wonderful. Yes. You know, sometimes they don't say thank you, and that's what it is. Yeah. But it still makes you feel good. Yeah. Do things that make you feel good. Yeah. And it really is good. Like you're doing this for you because you feel good about doing it. Yeah. But you're you're helping. Yeah. You know, a, a distressed, a helpless creature yeah. that was screwed up by our greed on fishing and making more money and you know it's greed There's so much greed out there it's ridiculous yeah there is a lot of greed but you know not to put the fishermen down either because they're making a living right and if they're making an honest living you know you can't fault them for that well uh, hopefully it's an honest one i don't know if, if you know much about there's a lot of people that don't know what's going on in them on the planet yeah and one of them uh, is an extinction level event from, oh from over fishing. fukushima yeah well those fishermen are still catching radiated fish and because they have to make a living they'll cut off the head so you won't see the danger you won't see them um you know that it's been radiated wow and selling them wow that i had not heard yes the the rice fishermen Mm. are literally growing rice in fields next to those thousands of tanks you know they have to build a tank every single day there that um costs a million dollars and it holds um quite a lot of um I think it costs two million dollars and it's a million gallon tank and that's the really really bad irradiated water yeah. and they have to build one every single day where is this this is in Fukushima Japan wow. where they had the um the meltdown yeah. that meltdown has been um pouring 100,000 tons of radiated water into the ocean every single day for the last eight years and it'll continue to do that for the next 40 to 100 years until someone figures out how to stop the leak. Not how to clean it up, just how to stop it. They say the person who's going to figure out how to stop the leak hasn't been born yet. Great. And this is an extinction level event. I actually created a website called help, helpussavetheplanet.com. Yeah. And every day we have an hour broadcast on that subject alone. And wow. people don't know about it. No. They just don't know. And I sometimes I, I, I like to say ignorance is bliss, but come on, people. I mean, it's not going to save the planet. It's not going <laughs> to save the planet. We, I, I always say, I like aliens. I like alien um, shows and uh-huh. documentaries. Uh-huh. And if I'm an alien, first off, they're not going to speak English or French or German. <laughs> they're going to speak uh, communicate telepathically, like we are in the future. Uh, in my opinion, words are an archaic form of communication. Uh, if I want to communicate something to you right now, I have to know the words. I have to use the right words that you're going to understand, and I have to use it in the correct um, pronunciation and and grammar and everything else, right? right. For you to understand my thought. Right. With the More future, we're not going to use words. You know, we're going to we're going to like you've already already dealt with your husband and your kids. You can give them a look, and they know exactly what you're saying, right? Yeah. And that'll be perfected down in the future. But what I'm trying to say is the aliens, when they come here, that's how they've been communicating. But I would not talk to humans. I would talk to dolphins yeah. or ants. Ants got it together, right? Yeah. They don't kill each other. They work as a team. They all have a common purpose, and they're, they're, they're united. They're hard little workers. And they're united. Yeah, they are. There's no competition. <laughs> There's no um, cheating on the one's wives, you know? <laughs> Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> they studied them. They're little bitty guys. They are little bitty guys. Anyway, they're, and they're fun to watch. They are. They're they they're are hardworking. So they they are. don't they don't go on vacation. No. They don't uh, take coffee breaks. No. Speaking of which, you get makers. Lovely coffee here. Thank you so much for that. You're very welcome. Well, I think it's fantastic what you're doing, Doctor Fantastic. Well, I tell you, I can't wait to wake up in the morning. To do it now. Here's a secret to happiness. I've got lots of philosophies that you'll find on my 900 interviews on YouTube, my 136 podcasts, and now my radio show. I just did my fourth episode of my radio show. It's on a, a, a network called HealthyLife.net. Yeah. 
Positive Talk Radio. Yeah. And I interviewed a writer, yeah. a prolific writer that's got 38 screenplays, five, um, five uh, uh, plays, you know, musicals. Yeah. And, and much other things. And it was a great hour. And it was my best one of the four. Because, you know, I love tackling new, new and exciting adventures. Yeah. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to be a radio show host. Because <laughs> I think I can. Yeah. And I didn't think I did such a great ep- um, one on the first episode, but my agent called Practice. and said they all stopped in the office and listened to it and said it was wonderful. <laughs> but, so I'll take their word for it. But uh, to me, it wasn't the greatest. But no, yesterday's all... was very nice. And you can hear it on SpreckerStudio.com um, or on my website, BeFantasticToday.com. And it was fun. Now, you, you need to have fun in life. That The secret to happiness is to wake up in the morning like you just did at 3 in the morning to jump on a plane to go save a species. <laughs> That's called having a passion. When you have a passion, it's fun. It is fun. And typically, when, when you're doing it as a career, you'll make money at it. Now, you're not right. making money at this. No, sadly. But it's, no, <laughs> much not, not sadly. Much not sadly, but I mean, you could do it for money if you wanted to. You know, I'm sure they hire people to, to rescue animals yeah, down there. Do. But you're doing it for the, uh, the kindness of your heart. And, and we need more people with heart in this world. We need more people being civil to yeah. one another. You know, getting back to your comments about having fun and being happy, I um, I used to work as a physician assistant, and my first boss um, was really fun to work with. And one of our patients made a comment that we seem to have so much fun at work. And he said, well, you know what? You spend so much time at it, it's really important that you do have fun. Work should not be a bummer. Right. And I love that philosophy. And it's so true. I think, you know, you should find something that gives you joy. And if you can make money at it, fantastic. Yeah. And, I mean, we all have to make money somehow. I'm not employed right now, but I'm fortunate to be married to a man who makes enough money that I can go save marine mammals. Right, right, right. Um, but, you know, I think it's important when you do have to spend so much time earning money to enjoy what you're doing. Yeah. Um, well, unfortunately, most people don't. Yeah. Because they're chasing the money. They're yeah. Not, they're doing things yeah. like being a lawyer or being a stockbroker just to make the money. Yeah. Now, they don't do it as, oh, I'm going to be a stockbroker because it sounds like a lot of fun asking people <laughs> for money. They do it because they think they can make a lot of money and they can't, right? Yeah. So I have a thing on my um, my app. I have a phone app on Android and one on coming out on iPhone. And also on the website, it's called Ask Doctor Fantastic Anything. And people were asking me everything under the moon, including the moon. Yesterday, someone asked, is the moon real? Okay. And I've been asked about aliens and about relationships and about every sort of thing yeah. so far. People take a selfie and they send it in and I answer it, right? Uh-huh. Because whatever question you have right now, Kim, a million other people have that same question. And so you're actually, you're doing, if you agree to ask a question, you're doing it service to many others so this one girl sends in the question and it's, she says every morning I wake up in a bad mood what can I do and you know my answer to that is you don't have a, a passion you're not waking up looking forward to doing something yeah that's why you're in a bad mood well and a purpose oh well, that's the thing passion say, purpose you know, it's yeah. important to have a purpose passion and purpose well hopefully the, the purpose is your passion yes now I love meeting you this morning to tell you about a movement that you had no idea. You probably say when someone asks how you are, you probably answer it with the word good. Am I correct? Correct. And 90% of humans on the planet use that word. Yeah. Now, you may not know this, Kim, I'm going to tell you something that you didn't know. The question, how are you, yes. originated in the days of the Black Plague oh. when it was a life or death question. Yeah. If you got this close to me back then, you died within a week. Yeah. It was also known as the bubonic plague. Yeah. And a third of the world died from this idiot called Pope Gregory the Ninth, who caused it. He killed all the cats. He, or he thought cats were the devil's worship, so he ordered the extinction of all the cats. What happened when that happened? All the rats yeah. came out, and the fleas, ah. and the plague. So that's how the plague started. So back then, you would scream at a great distance to me, Monty! How are you? And I'd only have one of two answers. I've got it! Which means stay away. Unless I was a total ass, I'd say, Kim, come on over! And you died within a week with me. 
Or I would yell out, I'm well. So actually the correct answer, the good answer to how are you is I'm well. But everyone says good. You know? Um, well, yeah, which is not proper Not proper English. English. But we don't have the plague anymore. Right. So good, well, fine, all right, so, so, can't yeah. complain. Not bad, not too bad, which really throws me for a curve. Um, <laughs> oh, great, awesome, wonderful, and blessed. None of those answers, Kim, none of them put a smile on your face. The only answer to that 600-year-old question that everyone every day gets asked, and as a philosopher, I know we can't change the question, right? But we could change the answer. When we change the answer to I am fantastic, whether you are or not, it it creates an energy. It creates engagement. It it makes you feel good, look great, and live longer. I think that's probably true. It's all true. It's all provable because a smile releases the endorphins, the dopamine, and the serotonin in your brain, these neuromessenger units that make you feel good. Yeah. A smile makes you look great. Yeah. And every time you smile or laugh, you live five minutes longer. Happy people live longer. Yeah. And so I'm on a mission to get everyone to be fantastic. Now, what, what I, I don't like that question, by the way, how are you? Because it's a, it's a, it's a rhetorical question. No yeah. one has time to hear the answer, and they don't want to hear the answer. Typically, which is I mean, why you just say I'm good. Well, that's exactly I think right. That's you why just I love blow it off. You just say I'm good. But I think Even hello though. or good morning <laughs> yes. is a fine Sally uh, greeting, right? Uh, yes. So now people know when they ask me how I am, they're going to hear I, I am fan fucking tastic, <laughs> which is the, um, the professional level. <laughs> um, and it's not a cuss word; it's a uh, adjective because it's the middle <laughs> word. Just so you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Um, but they know they're going to hear that I'm fantastic. So they're stopping to ask me, which is fine with me, because it's just a silly greeting that's ingrained into our society. In France, it's Sava, in Mexico, it's Ketal, in Germany, it's Vigets, but it's everywhere, how are you? Except in a couple countries. China says, how was your meal, as a greeting, and Korea says, have you eaten? Really? Because in Korea, they had a big starvation deal. And it was like, have you eaten? Oh, wow, aren't you the lucky one, right? So I'm on a mission to make the world a more civil place. You may think I'm crazy, but someone's got to do it. I love your mission. But the thing is, get this. Every one of us on the planet have two things in common, Kim. Two basic things. We're going to be asked how we are today, every day of our lives, every day for the rest of our lives. And we can do something with the answer now. And we know that being positive is better than being negative. Knowing your flight's going to be on time. Knowing you're going to have a great time this weekend. Knowing you're, um, uh, that you're going to save some some animals. The f- positive thinking manifests positive action. And I proved it in, a, in, a, in 65 years. I proved it by traveling around the world, doing all the incredible things that I've done in my life. I'm a published author. Yeah. I've worked in literally 80 different fields in my life. Wow. 80. Wow. Counts at 80. What a great life. It's been a great life. And it's still and going. I'm still kicking. <laughs> I'm still looking forward to meeting more Kims and learning more things and, and uh, spreading the knowledge because it's all about knowledge. It's all about experience. Do you know what common sense is? Uh, yeah. Ask me to define it, though. Um, yeah, I mean, I innately know what common yeah. sense is. You it's know what most people say? Street smarts, kind of. It's, yeah. Most people say it's not common. Yeah. And I looked it up one day. I think that's true. I looked it up one day, Sadly. and I couldn't believe what I read. And I actually read it um, as a um, virtual reality. I like shooting virtual reality. Uh-huh. I actually recorded a virtual reality uh, rendition of Common Sense, and it literally was 30 minutes long. And it was a 30-minute article describing Common Sense. And I didn't know it, but you can learn it. But really, what it is, it's, it's experience. So you really don't get it till you get experience. Uh-huh. And, of course, um, I was pretty lucky early on to get... I think I was just born with common sense. But I think my foster dad taught me a lot of it because yeah. he taught me the trades. And when you yes. do a lot of work, you know, yeah. you had a lot of experience. And that was tra- when I hitchhiked around the world, um, that was his... The only thing he really gave me was that. Yeah. He was a horrible well, person. Huge. And I hope, I hope he rots in hell because um, he was a pretty bad person. But but that's not positive. That's not positive, no. <laughs> right. But but I hope he's rotting in heaven. <laughs> and and um, 
you know, receiving the gift of common sense and it's yeah, huge. You're right. I, I do I, think for some people, like forgiveness, right? There's a thing called forgiveness, yeah. and I gotta, I gotta and that makes you feel good too. Yeah. Okay. Not I at first. You. It's hard, but. But, um, and you know what, what happens is, you uh, have you read the book, The Four Agreements, I mentioned earlier? I have not, no. You need to buy that book, okay. and you need to give it as gifts. Okay. It's a small book. Yeah. It's been a, a, a hit for decades. Yeah. And let I me tell you what the four agreements are. Because okay. if we live by these four agreements, your life's going to be more enriched, and society is going to be better off. And they are the, thus. Be impeccable with your word. And then to me, that, uh, and of course it goes into great detail what that means, but not only keeping your word, yeah. but the words that you say matter. Yes. And people, because you said and them. And you can't take them back. You can't take them back. So first is be impeccable with your word. Yeah. Second is never, and this is real important for more for women, I'm sorry to be a chauvinist, but it is, never let what people think about you affect you. Never. Because they have their own agendas. Yeah. They, um, it's never usually about you. They have their insecurities, they have their jealousies, and it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Right. I always told my wife, if I ran into a hundred people today that told me I was a total loser, yeah. I would say, what are the odds I ran into a hundred wrong people today? Right. Because I, no one's opinion matters but yours. Right. Okay. And so you're fantastic. Well, thank you for that, but you're fantastic. You're fantastic. Okay. And we need to make more fantastic people. So the third agreement is never make assumptions. If you think about it, every time you make an assumption, it's a negative thing. You're not making a, a positive assumption on things. Yeah. You're making a negative assumption on things. And as you know, it makes an ass out of you and me. Yeah. So never make assumptions. And it goes into great deal, detail about that because it's a book, right? And then yeah. the last one, which I really like, no matter what you do in life, do your best. Yes. That's all you can do. Yeah. And I tell people, if your best isn't good enough for your boss... Yeah. Walk up to him, tell him, I'm sorry, but this is my best, and we have to part ways because uh, I can't work for someone who doesn't respect my best. Yeah. You know, if it's not good enough for him, then there's something wrong with, usually with them yeah. to expect more because you know, people want to expect more from people. You can only expect so much. Yes. You know, you can't be mad at someone at McDonald's for getting the order wrong, right? You can't expect more than them from that because they wouldn't be working at McDonald's if they. Or a, a, a scientist. Oh, but they can get or a doctor. orders right. But you know what? You would a, think a, boss, they would. a boss who doesn't think your best is enough, instead of being critical of it, should show you how to do your job better. And or that help comes you from good management. You're correct. Right. You're very correct in that. But again, you, people are uh, are are of uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not perfect, <laughs> I guess is the best word, well, because true. there's so many people that don't know how to be a good boss, and right. they were pushed up through the ranks yeah. just because they were there. See, I, 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 a person like Eisner, literally I have no respect for, because he, he started in the mail room, yeah. okay, and he went up through the ranks, yeah. now he's of course a chairman and a billionaire yeah. or whatever, yeah. but he never, I mean, in my opinion, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, he never took a chance. He just went up through the ranks. Uh -huh. He was pushed up because he was in the right place at the right time. You know, you have to take risk in life. You have to dump that job uh, and, and try something new And to me. But that's easier for some people than others. Yeah, of course. That we all can't be, you know, Dr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but some people are very risk averse. Yes, that's true. And, you know, those are just different personalities, I think. Yeah, it's... well, you know, it's like when you rode a bike. Everyone rode a bike, right? Most everyone. Yeah. You fell down, you scraped your knee. Yeah. You put a band-aid on it, you got back up, and you rode it again. Yeah. So I think if you take that attitude in life, you know, you're going to not be afraid of risk. Because I think there's a big reward when you take risk. That's why people don't work for themselves. I mean, it really, if you think about it, it's easier to fail than it is to succeed. For sure. Because when, you when you're on the top of the ladder, you can fall off the ladder. That's what people are afraid of, yeah. falling down. So I know many people that would never take a risk. They always want to be on the bottom. Yeah. And um, they're they're fine with that because it's much, much easier. Yeah. And that's what makes the world go round. There's, yeah. You know, everyone's different. Yeah, you can't sure. all be leaders or right. the, 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 the mice. It's like, this, it's like the mice thing you said earlier. Maybe they all want to be leaders. That's why they're all fighting. And they're all mad. 
mad. They're all mad because I want to be the leader. No, I want to be the leader. <laughs> it's a funny world. It is a funny world. And uh, I always say it's the game of life. And you don't have to cheat or steal to win. You just have to be a good person. Yeah. And um, do your best. Do your best. Be nice. Be kind. There you go. See now, Kim, you are a fantastic person. I want you to go to YouTube when you're uh, waiting for your plane and go to Be Fantastic, those two words, <laughs> and join the movement. Okay. It'll be 1759. Okay. And um, what you don't a have good to. Number. I'm sorry? 1759, what a great number. Yeah. 1759. Okay, I will. I'll join the movement. I like it. I love it. Thank you. And everybody listening, share, like, subscribe. Um, do. Go out of your way and be kind to animals, be kind to humans, be kind to yourself, love yourself, because if you don't love yourself, no one else will love you, and you don't need 100 people to love you, don't take rejection to you, to heart, not everyone's going to love you, some women like fat guys, some guys like fat chicks, so there's someone out for you if you love yourself, be kind, be, love yourself, be fantastic everybody, thanks for listening Kim. You're, 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 you're fantastic. You're fantastic. Let's, be, let's like make the world a more fantastic place. Yeah, I love it. Bye, everybody. Bye. 31 minutes we just did. Well, that was fun. Wasn't it fun? Yeah. Everybody has fun in my interviews. <laughs> no, actually, it was one person out of the, I think, about 1,200 now interviews. Wow. Supposed to be. One lady, one yeah. girl, I should call her lady, who said she wanted to be an actress, uh-huh. funny uh-huh. enough. I said, well, let's put up the camera on, because I drive Uber and Lyft, right? Yeah. And I really love doing that, because I meet so many people. I'll bet. Yesterday, I met the guy who um, is a star of the a thing called Special, and uh, he's the writer, four Emmy nominations. Wow. And there are billboards all over town that says Special. Cool. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. And he didn't do an interview, but at any rate, she, did, she agreed to do an interview, uh-huh. so I put the camera on the windshield. Uh-huh. And uh, she said, no, no, I can't be on camera. So I turned <laughs> the camera around, so when you go and see, there's a traffic. Because when people don't want to be uh, photographed, I respect her that. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, you're not going to be seen now. Then she disguised her voice into an English accent, mm. which I thought was bizarre, but I didn't say anything. And we had a nice little interview. And I turned it off. And she goes, you know what? I'm feeling really um, anxiety about that. Um, uh, can you erase it? I said, well, well one, no one's going to know you because you, we didn't see you and you didn't hear your voice. So no one's going to know it was you. So yeah. um, I did the recording. It was a nice little interview. I'm, uh, no, I'm going to keep it. So then she starts crying. So I said, okay, if it's that important, I'll delete it. And I yeah. just I deleted it. So one person out of the over 1,000 people I've interviewed uh, didn't enjoy it. Wow. <laughs> and I just felt sorry for her because yeah, she obviously has some real fucking problems. Uh, Excuse yeah, my language. kind of sad. Boy, that's, if that's, you want to be an actress. Yeah. I mean, you want to be an actress? Be and, all over that. Uh, oh, my gosh. You're kidding me? And all the thousand interviews on YouTube, and not all the interviews sometimes, like the other day, if you, I don't know if you've ever been to the Venice, Venice Light Parade. No. Every Sunday at, uh, at dusk, about 100 cyclists do a little uh, parade, huh. and they're all lit up with neon lights. How oh, fun. And so I photographed that, and also the, um, the stuff that's around it, you know, the skate park and what have you. Then I, uh, I heard of all these drummers drumming. And I went in and uh, photographed that, and it was, it's called the Venice Drum Circle, and they've been performing every Sunday oh, since neat. the 70s. Wow. So I recorded that, and it's about 20 minutes of just drumming, yeah. which some people think is uh, therapeutic, so I, I recorded that. Yeah. And earlier in the day, the reason I did the light parade is I, w- um, I was driving around, and I saw this um, th- this parade, not parade, but all the streets are blocked off for like six miles in, L- in L.A. from uh-huh. Hollywood uh, Boulevard to San Vicente, right? Yeah. And it was called Ciclavia. And they do it twice a year. Uh-huh. They close off six miles of roads on in Los Angeles, and everyone rides bikes. Fun. So I stopped, and I interviewed a few people. Yeah. And as I'm interviewing one guy, another guy walks up and says, I know you, Dr. Fantastic. I saw you at the Electric Light Parade, and we're having one today. And I said, okay, well, because I thought there would be like a lot more bikes, so at dusk. I went over there and filmed that. So actually, had, I don't usually do three films a day, but that was fun to, to, to shoot those. So yeah. sometimes it's not, and of course, there are always interviews inside it, yeah. um, even if it's just an event. But most yeah. of the time, it's me in a car with someone like yourself talking about life, love, the pursuit of happiness, yeah. and 
Everyone has something to offer. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Some people say, no, I, I'm boring. I'm, I'm nobody. I said, trust me. You've got knowledge of what you do for a living. Yeah. You've got something to offer the world. And yeah. this is offering the world just, you know, a, a casual conversation. And you learn something from every interview. Like today, someone's going to learn something from this, right? We talked about some nice stuff. Yeah. We talked about saving species, Pinnipids. which is important. Pinnipids and cetaceans. But more important is is the thought that we had, you know, the, the, what we conveyed through the, the, through the 31 minutes of being kind. Well, let's hope. And giving. Let's hope. Let's hope. It does make you a little bit self-conscious, though. Being interviewed? Yeah. Well, just because, because you're not used being, to it. Just When's because, the last time you were interviewed? <laughs> I can't even tell you. I know. Most people never get interviewed. And, and recorded. And because you know that, you know, it's going down. But you, your name wasn't there, so that's what's important. I, I think most people but want to. But Marine Mammal yeah, Alliance, Nantucket. Well, that's true. They're going to track you down, Kim. I know. You're in trouble now. I am. No, I'm, I gave a plug for our organization. Yes, you did. And I'll send you a link if you give me uh, your contact information. All right. Or you can just go to my website. I give you my card. It'll be. Uh, it's all linked on my website. The, mm-hmm. the YouTube's. The, the, so do uh, I podcast. just go to your your podcast? It's a what you do is you go to um, Be Fantastic Today. What kind of phone do you have? iPhone. Uh, iPhone. Yeah, it'll be uh, linked on your iPhone on the app called Be Fantastic okay. in about two weeks. But today, uh, if you wanted to hear it, which you'll be able to hear it in probably in twenty minutes, um, you just go to um, my website, which is Be Fantastic Today. Okay. And uh, all the links are there. Okay, be fantastic today. Yeah, it's on my card. Okay. My card has everything. Okay. And uh, and what I want you to consider now, Kim, in retirement, and this is very easy. Yes. And it's it's needed, is I want you to consider being what I call an ambassador of positivity. Okay. And as an ambassador, all you have to do is be fantastic. I like it. And say it all the time, religiously. Okay. Because it's helping other people when you say it. Yes, I agree. Now, a lot of millennials say, if I say I'm fantastic and I'm not feeling well, I'm being disingenuous or I'm lying. And you know what I say to that? That's a selfish statement. Because all you're doing is you're thinking about yourself <laughs> when you say that. Uh-huh. Because when you say you're fantastic to someone, you just make them smile. Uh-huh. You made them feel good and you made them live longer. If that's not being kind, even when you're feeling shitty, I don't know what is. <laughs> Ellen, every day at the end of her show, says, be kind to one another. I know. I'm trying to get on her show because this her. is the easiest way to be kind to people. I know. I Just tell them her. you're fantastic. Yeah. Now, some people will doubt it because, you know, there are negative people out there. Yeah. And, like, why should you be fantastic? And a lot of people who know you are already saying, why? And there's two good answers to that. First one I love is, why not? Why yeah. not? Right? Yeah. And then, because so nobody is fantastic. Of the 3,000 people I've asked that question to, I usually ask everyone, have you ever met anyone? Well, let me ask you. Have you ever met anyone in your life that says they're fantastic? Not did you think, like your husband or your kids, that say they're fantastic when asked. Well, you. Well, that's one. Okay. And I've probably met, I don't know if they've said I'm fantastic, but... You could probably say I'm great or I'm wonderful. Yeah, or just, you know... Okay. Let me tell you something. Oh, let me now. Let me guess. Or this excellent. Qu- yeah, or... that's very positive people. Yeah. But saying fantastic is a whole breed in them of themselves. Now, how many of the three thousand people I've asked that question to? Do you think have ever met someone in their life that says they're fantastic? Because you basically said no because you didn't. Because yeah, you, you immediately know who that person is when asked that question. By the way, so how many out of three thousand you think have actually met someone in their life? That says they're fantastic. What's your guess? Maybe one or two. Okay, and here's the funniest fact. You know, it, it just kills me when I, I hear the answer because 99% of the people guess 10 or less. They guess 10 or less, and the answer is 89. Really? 89 people out of 3,000 have actually met someone in their life that says they're fantastic. Now, as you read on my card, or you may not have read yet. It says, be happier, live longer, and never be forgotten. Kim, you will never be forgotten. when he, Even if at the airport, at the ticket counter, she says, how are you? And you say, I am fantastic. I'm going to try it. Kim, the I'm girl will it. never forget I'm you. i do it. As long as she lives. Monty, I'm doing it. You should do it now. I love it. Now, Kim, I love that you love it. And you're getting it. I want you to be an ambassador. Okay. And that means you need to send me your email and your phone. Okay. And I'm going to list you as ambassador number 43. Okay. Now, we only have 42, and you're being 43. Okay. Um, if you're serious. If there's no obligation other than to be fantastic, 
and, and obviously spread the movement. I love tell it. Tell people about it. Tell your husband about it. I love it. Now, I could tell you story upon story. We don't have any time, but real quickly, I met a guy right there at the Sheraton at a convention called, um, it was about life. Um, what was it called? It was, oh, it doesn't matter. We don't have time. Anyway, <laughs> the Conscious Life Expo. That's what it was. Okay. And he was, I didn't know at the time, but he was going to give a speech. Yeah. And I met him, and in five minutes, I told him about being fantastic. He called me up a week later and said, Mona, you don't know it, but I had a speech to do that day. And I went into that speech, and everyone said it was the best speech of the convention and the best speech I've ever given. And it was because of you telling me to be fantastic. And he went home that night and told his wife about it. And he said, we are fantastic, and it changed my life. Wow. And it's changing people's lives. What a compliment. I love it. I you. know. All and right. I've got lots of those, but we don't have time. But the point is, I want you to be fantastic. I want you to be an ambassador because we need 43,000 ambassadors or 430,000 okay. one day. Because this is the only way, not the only way. I always say I can't do it myself. I don't like the word can. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to spread the movement as easily by myself as with your help. And the okay. 42 others and the thousands that already, um, or 1,700, that are people that have heard how easy it is to make the world a better place. And you're going to have a whole little pod of Malibu women who are going to jump on this because I'm having dinner with them tonight on Cape Cod. Oh. And um, I'm going to spread your message. Okay. And then tomorrow I'm going to go spread it with the Marine Mammal Alliance well, and take it. And you know, I'm thinking about getting, uh, I know the owner, I drove the owner of the, um, the Malibu surf site. I'm thinking about getting by in an ad. You know, um, I don't have a whole lot of money for this, but all the money I, I, I make, yeah, because uh, I'm retired, I, I put into it. Yeah. And I put thousands of dollars into it. I have a board right now, by the way. It's called Be Fantastic International, the corporation. Yeah. And we actually have stock in the company, and we're going to go public because we're going to be doing concerts. Uh-huh. And on my board, if you when you go to my website, check yeah. out my board. Okay. You'll be very impressed. Okay. We have all the talent to, um, to create mega concerts and we have all the connections to the talent like Lady Gaga Drake Nicki Minaj Aerosmith The Stones wow. we have direct contact with these bands wow. we have the potential funding through my board but more importantly we have the talent that produce Live Aid and Farm Aid wow. and um, all the Academy Award production um, shows Lou Horowitz we have those people are in our family basically so what is Fantastic. it? Is it six? I think you're going to. Oh God, I don't remember. I, I want to say three. Oh, three. And Jet Blue. Jet so Blue. It used to be. I don't think it's three. It used to be here. Well, we'll but find it. One of my sayings in life, Kim, is there's no wrong turns in life. Every turn you make is a decision you made. I think that's true. And you need to look at every decision you make as the correct one. And when that happens, you get confidence in your decision making. And when that happens, you're going to have success in life. And when that happens, you should be happy. And I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And You and me meeting was JetBlue 5, yeah. 5? Okay. Yeah. Um, and it took me 65 years of left and right turns to meet you tonight, yeah. this morning. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yes. And I, if, I, if I didn't make any Likewise. one of those, if I made any one of those wrong, or not wrong, different, Yes. I wouldn't have met you tonight. And if I had gone with the other um, limo company... You would never have met me. I would have never have met you, but I wanted to go with Patricia yeah. because she was a Malibu girl. Yeah, and she's I, amazing. She is amazing. I, uh, Hardest working person I know in life. patronize a Malibu company, yeah. and yeah. she was so... She's amazing. On the phone. She's amazing. Been doing it 40 uh, so some odd years. She has no life. She's the hardest working person I've ever known in my life. Well, I can only imagine the logistics of. Oh, she's a up twenty four seven, basically. Yeah, I can only imagine. And she says sometimes she gets a call at nine o'clock at night that somebody needs a ride at. Now she <laughs> begs me to work for her because I don't. I'm not a limo driver, by the way. Yeah. Um, I'll do it when what? when she begs me. Um, and uh, and you as you know, I don't wear a tie. And I talked to you. Limo drivers are not supposed to talk to the clients. And she knows I'm going to talk to you. And she's fine with it because typically people like talking to me. Well, and it made the ride go by really Yeah. Fast. And wait till you hear some of my interviews. It'll blow your mind. <laughs> well, I can't wait to check them out. Yeah. I'm, sure I'm so happy you you're own, but... <laughs> Ambassador 43. I'm excited to be Ambassador 43. And we are going to change the world. I like it. And I we can like start it. with Malibu because Malibu has all the influence. You know, if we could afford... I don't know. Do you know the owners of Surfside? No. 
No. Maybe they can give me is a discount or something. Is that the Yorks? No. Um, or are they the other one? Mel they, you know, his the name Mal is Ryan. Jack Ryan.